Using the Tor browser is a right step towards protecting your privacy and to preserve your anonymity when you browse the internet. But just installing Tor and using it with its default settings is not enough. Tor has many settings that will make it more secure. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to implement these settings along also with other measures that you should take so to preserve your anonymity and your privacy when you browse the internet. And at the end, I'm going to also tackle the sensitive subject of using Tor over the VPN and I'm going to give you my idea on this subject. So let me start first by showing you what are the settings you need to implement on Tor to make it more secure. Just before starting, please listen to this disclaimer. This video's purpose is not to teach you how to use Tor for illegal activities. It is only to teach you how to preserve your privacy and your anonymity on the internet. So always use Tor for legal purposes. Now that being said, let me show you the settings that you need to implement on your Tor browser. So this is the Tor browser here running on Windows 11. Open the menu and then go to settings that is here almost at the bottom. And the first setting you need to make sure that it is checked is that Tor is updating automatically. So scroll until towards the end of the general page under settings until you find Tor browser updates. And here make sure that automatically install updates is checked. Now the next setting is under search. So click on search on the left. And here you have the search engine. Always use DuckDuckGo, never use Google, never use Bing or Yahoo or any other search engine. Even with DuckDuckGo, there is a more secure option. So click on the drop down list here and choose DuckDuckGo Onion instead of DuckDuckGo Plain. So this is DuckDuckGo Onion chosen. So now let's go to the privacy and security menu. And here we have many settings that we need to adjust. So let's scroll first until we arrive to history. And here make sure that always use private browsing mode is selected. In case you selected another option before, make sure to clear all the history that you already have on your Tor browser. Now let's scroll down and under permissions, make sure that location, camera and microphone don't have any websites that access them that you didn't permit specifically. So I'm going to here show you an example under microphone only and you can check the same under location and camera. So click on the settings next to each one and here Look at the list. If you have a website that you don't recognize, just remove it. And if you want to block future requests, choose block new request and then click on save changes and do this for all the settings here and the permissions that you want to do this for. Now let's scroll also and here under security. And this is very important. You have by default three security levels for Tor. When you install Tor, it will be on the standard security level. You want to change this and to make it on the safer security level. So the safer is the best compromise between standard and safest because safest is really very restrictive. You can test which one is better for you and go with this setting. For me, I'll put it always on safer. Now let's scroll down here. Also, we need to check the certificate that query OCSP is always selected. OCSP is Online Certificate Status Protocol. So keep always this selected. And also very important here, under HTTPS only mode, make sure always that enable HTTPS only mode in all windows is always selected. Now let's go to the connection menu. And in the connection menu, you can leave everything by default. I wanna show you only the bridges here in case you live in a country where Tor is censored or in case your ISP block store also, you can enable bridges. You need to know that when you enable bridge, the browsing will be really very slow. So here I'm gonna enable a built-in bridge in Tor just to show you how it works. So click on select a built-in bridge and you have three types of bridges. Start always with the first one, which is OBFS4. I'm gonna select it and then I'm gonna click on OK. And here use bridges is automatically selected. And now you can access the Tor network even if it is blocked in your country or if your ISP blocks it. If OBS4 doesn't work, select another built-in bridge until you find the one that works for you. So here I'm gonna deselect it because I don't use bridges. I am in a country where Tor is not censored. Now we arrive to the second part of the video where I show you the best practices of using Tor. The first best practice is while you are using Tor, 
on a regular basis, click this icon here to refresh the Tor circuit and to change the entry point, the medium point and the exit point of Tor. So click on this icon here and the first thing it will show you is how you are connected to the Tor network now. So click on a new Tor circuit for this site and the good thing about this is that the Tor will refresh the circuit and you will stay connected to the same site. There's another way of refreshing all the connections in the Tor browser and closing it and restarting it automatically and it is this broom here. So if you click on it, you can refresh everything in Tor but this will close all the tabs and you restart from scratch. So this is what it did here. It closed everything and it refreshed Tor. Now the second thing I want to show you in the best practices is that you need to download Tor always from the official website of Tor, which is torproject.org. Never get another copy of Tor from any other website. And this takes me to the third best practice. Whenever you go into a site, Tor will automatically tell you if there is an Onion equivalent for this site. If there is an Onion equivalent, always go to the Onion equivalent of the site. So here you click on Onion available and it will reconnect to the site via the Tor Onion network. And this takes me to the fourth precaution that you need to take. So always make sure that your OS is updated, whether you are using Windows, Mac, Linux or other operating system, always make sure it is updated and it has an anti-malware and an antivirus and your OS is clean. Now, of course, it's better to use Linux with Tor and even use another dedicated operating system like Unix or like Tails. If you want to see how to install Unix or Tails, I've made dedicated videos on this. You can find the link for these videos in the description. Now, the other precautions that are equally important the first one is never ever use personal information that can identify you on the Tor network. So do not log in to your Gmail, do not log in to your Outlook, do not log in to Facebook, never use this. And also what is considered as personal information is for instance, if you upload a media like a picture or a video that has EXIF information that can go back to you, like metadata and where it is taken, and by which camera it was taken. So also do not upload any personal information that might identify you. And the last precaution, but not the least, is never download from P2P networks like torrent network because the torrent files might have malware that can point back to you. And this takes me to the last part of this video. And this part is, should I use VPN and Tor together? So here there are many opinions on that. I'm going to give you my own opinion. You use Tor so that to anonymize yourself. If you use VPN, you're going to log in with your credentials to your VPN provider. And if your VPN provider has any security failing, you can be identified easily. So for me, I will never use VPN to connect to the Tor network. Now, connecting to the Tor network via VPN also has advantages. For instance, if your ISP blocks Tor and you don't want to use bridges, you can use a VPN connection to connect to the Tor network and it will hide the Tor network from your ISP. And also, if you want to hide your IP from the entry point of Tor, you can also use a VPN for this. But as I told you before, I don't like to use VPN with my Tor network. Let me know in the comments section what is your opinion on this matter. And at the end, I want to tell you, and this is very important, any security layer, any security tool that you use, it is as secure as how you use it. That being said, I want to thank you all for watching this video. If you got any value from my video, please share it, subscribe to my channel, and give this video a thumbs up. And if you want to take it a notch further, you can join my channel as a member. I'm Eloy from Knowledge Sharing Tech. See you in the next video.